I'm, I'm thinking, what is that smell? You know, I'm kind of coughing and wheezing and, and there's ash raining everywhere, right? I don't know if you can see that, but ash raining all over the truck, which fertilizes my property, so not too bad. But I'm thinking, what's going on? You wouldn't believe what's going on right down the street. Oh, good heavens. Is this a Fecalis fossilis? Oh, the Smithsonian would love to get their hands on one of these. So figuring out where the plumbing is going as well, and let me tell you, it's been a challenge. We got one pipe there, we got one pipe here, we got another pipe over here, and when we turn on the sink, we don't know where that goes. <laughs> and not, not to mention, there's also some cistern plumbing over there, and uh, there's, there's probably 30 different pipes under that house with like seven fixtures. So I ended up finding this um, clean out right here and thought, well, it's bound to go somewhere, saw it curve this way, dug it all the way out and a little bit you know dirt got knocked in there but followed it all the way to here and thought oh maybe it connects there no 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 no. goes over here and then i kind of drew a straight line and found this clean out this clean out didn't even have a cover on it and as you can see it's got a bunch of dirt and nasty stuff in there we're gonna have to clean that out but dug that back this way found a branch sure enough all the way down here and we finally have the septic tank. Now, hopefully on the other side of that, there's a leach field or a secondary tank or whatever. I don't know. But we're going to open that up here in a minute after the, uh, you know, archaeological dig, finding out what type of septic tank it is. We can look up the septic tank online, be able to find out um, what model it is so we know exactly, you know, approximately where everything's going to be. And yeah, we'll go ahead and show you that when we can. So it seems like just about every DIY video I make involves digging in some way, shape, or form. And uh, truth be told, if, if you want to get into homestead and you want to have a homestead, take a good look. This is it. Just digging and digging and digging. A whole lot of digging. You might think, well, you could use a tractor. You could use a ditch witch. Well, not for this. Not for going right over a septic tank. You can get maybe close with a tractor, but... For the last two feet, it's going to be all of you or somebody you pay. Okay, I'm already seeing things that you just don't want to see. Take a look at what we got. So, sure enough, this was an extension that they added. Maybe they took, they took the siding off this side and just brought it out and then added T111 to that side. But, um... I mean, this Romex is in, you know, scary shape. It looks as though it's gotten hot, and that might be exposed wires. Okay, that's the ground. But even then, I mean, the yeah, that's, I mean, that's just a fire hazard, really. So we're going to have to turn off power pretty much ASAP and deal with it. But it doesn't look too rotten in there either. What up? What a fitting name, right? The Frankenstein house. What a fitting name for this project. It has, well, that's gonna be kind of a fun reveal. I'm not gonna to say too much. Oh, that's gonna be all kinds of crazy going on in there. So what's worse than hard wiring an extension cord into your breaker box? hard wiring an extension cord into your breaker box and then just plugging it in to another extension cord. Not only that, they're opposites. There's no ground there. I mean, look at that. That is just grotesque. That's so bad. Of course, these aren't, they shouldn't be hot anymore. Oh, whoa, they're yeah, those might as well be melted together. Just melted. Melted together. And I had the power on here. Yeah, that's just no good. So... Okay, so... So this one's hardwired. And then they plugged another one in. Which... Not bad of an extension cord. I'll keep that for myself. But... um. 
It couldn't get much worse than that. So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Dylan, the back of this house is disgusting. Why don't you just rip all of it off at once? And you're probably right. But you never know till you rip everything off. And sure enough, <laughs> ripping all the vinyl off, or at least doing it in steps, we realized, yeah, that, okay, this is nasty. We're learning a little bit more every time we take something off. And, you know, just something to keep in mind there. Over here on this uh, right side of the house, we're removing all the shiplap. And you're going to see me hit it with a crowbar in a minute. A lot of it is in really good shape, but a lot of it also isn't. And we haven't quite decided whether we're going to save it or rip it all off and redo it. But, um, yeah, you know, I want to hear what y'all think in the comment section about that. Whether you think it'd be worth saving or even look decent saving, right? Is it, is it going to be, you know, if it's going to look bad, I don't want to save it. You can see that very solid, but, uh, you know, how much money could we potentially save? Okay, so we got all these wires disconnected. Man, let me tell you, it was a mess. Uh, we got, like, the telephone wire right there or something. But uh, all of these, you know, Romex, I've just been kind of coiling them up around. Being that they were literally just wiring everything on the outside of the house, you know, they're just coiling them up, and then from there, we can, we can kind of figure out, you know, uh, where they connect to. But easier to keep track of them rather than cutting them putting them somewhere else and then having you know a little tiny piece of wire hanging out next we're gonna be checking out what is inside of the cistern I don't know spooky all right so I'm watching the play eight and, and nausea warning <laughs> before you watch this because it's gonna be spinning around that camera but uh, as I was watching this th this goes down maybe 15 or 20 feet and at first when I was watching on my, my tiny little camera right my little GoPro on that screen I was thinking what is that like like concrete or or cement or you know some sort of uh like brick you know coated something I, I don't know but now that i'm looking at it again it almost looks like bedrock or like limestone down there and you got that iron staining too like some sort of mineral deposit you'll, you'll see what i'm talking about or maybe like some shale or clay i'm really not sure but i was a little bit disappointed seeing all that dirt down there and i don't know how to get it out nor am i brave enough to get it out nor am I stupid enough to go down there to get it out. So I really don't know, but let me know what y'all think, man. If you got any, if you got any experiences with cisterns, is that concrete or is that bedrock? Because who knows? That could be, you know, tapping into a little spring down there, a little cave, or something like that. I really don't know. Um, let me know what y'all think. Very interesting, though. Maybe a, a D-Day shelter, some sort of secret tunnel down there. You know, if we excavate it out. Not too sure, but either way, super, super cool. You can see there, it looks like some sort of little cave or. Something like that. You see that little tunnel? Like it got buried away. No, absolutely no idea what that stuff is, so let me know. So y'all got to see this bit of a pleasant surprise. This is going to be under the living room. And, uh, I don't, you know, it's going to be a little bit funky of an angle here to get, get under there. But check this out. Pretty solid stuff going on. A little bit of a little bit of funk right there maybe a little might be gotten wet at one point but uh really it's looking all the woods looking really solid under there we got some uh you know solid wood subfloor and um beam looks like it's in good shape and the joists do too so this was the area of the home that used to be the deck or the porch and uh you know when i was ripping off the vinyl i was freaking out look at that <laughs> that's the original railings for that for the uh, for the porch I'm really hoping that they're still in the wall and that we when, it, when we rip everything out we'll still have those those uh, beautiful probably really old good good wood railings now under here this is going to be where the deck was and look at that I mean that's not in bad shape either nothing looks too rotted or, or too you know wet or, or moldy or anything like that it's probably some uh, you know some really old um, Probably some of that like arsenic soaked wood or something like that. Once you get over there, I think that might have been an addition or where work was done. And that that's where the floor was getting kind of wonky. But uh, all this stuff looks good, man. We can keep those deck boards too when we turn it back into a porch. Really nice. Looking at the front of the house as well, it became evident to me that this, um, this little original canopy right here is leaning slightly down on the right side. And then you can also see kind of this deck is, is leaning down as well right there. So hoping we can get up under there and, and kind of straighten everything out right there and i think you know that that deck will be in pretty good shape maybe pressure wash it or replace the boards not quite too sure on that yet let's go ahead and show you inside what we found in the wall so this is going to be the kitchen essentially where the old 
where well we where we thought the old um, original wall was, and they had you know taken it out, and sure enough, you know we we done ripped this thing up pretty good and <laughs> found some hidden Romex in there, but you can see yeah there there was definitely some framing right here, and you know I can't necessarily see if that's connected well. It's probably not, which is why it's sagging. But we're we're definitely gonna have to do something about that, and hopefully there's enough support on the floor here to where when we end up you know framing this out and everything we it, it, you know we can just lift that up and uh, remake it a wall again. Probably have the uh, the back porch you know door right here or something you know right by the kitchen, and um, yeah. So everything up to this point, right? This was all I think part of the original decking. I think the original decking ended somewhere around here, and then that's where everything starts to get really wonky around here and uh, we're you know ripping holes in the walls um, can't really tell too much of what's going on in there but it just looks to be some sort of like t111 you know some sort of chipboard or plywood or something like that this was on the addition okay so this is gonna be that other closet and check it out they used to have a what appears to be at least where the um, hot water heater was and it looks like we have a gas line there uh, or you know propane no propane actually on the premises anymore, so I wouldn't expect that to be of any danger or concern, but look at that lumber. Check it out, right? Oh, you probably can't see that. There we go. So we got, you know, how many growth rings are on that bad boy? Probably 15 or 20, you know? And I guess it's all, it's all contingent, too, on, like, how the wood was cut, but look at that one. You can see that. Just so many growth rings. It's all dry, and it's rock solid. Which is really good news. Now, I don't know why they put carpet here. I, you know, Once we start ripping everything out, we'll get a better idea. But yeah, all in all, we, you know, we, we sort of made the decision now that we are going to renovate this. And it is worth salvaging. And you know, it's not going to be too much work to necessitate you know, ripping it. It'd probably be more work to rip it down and get rid of everything than it would be to just rip out the interior, you know, um, clean everything up, straighten it out, replace it, and... Um, yeah, put on new exterior, fresh coat of paint kind of thing, and, and, and move in the furniture. The crawl spaces might very well be uh, navigable. I'll show you in there, kind of get you a good look. We might be able to navigate in that crawl space. You can see there the mess, just the, the loo of problems with all that plumbing. There's just plumbing going all over the place. Looks like, too, it was well, another... Um, oh, that's probably the water pipe, actually. Well, I don't know. But... Yeah, you know, there, there's going to be some problems for sure. You can see, oh, yeah, you see that? Down there, we got some serious wonkiness going on with that um, with that beam. Seems to be sinking down pretty good right there. Probably no support or the, or the support gave out or something like that. It fell off, you know, in these concrete blocks. They, it looks like as well they had central uh, heating and air. You can see the ductwork under here. And I don't know if that was, you know, a furnace or something like that. No, no idea really, but yeah, you can see here that ductwork. Um bunch of ducks going down it looks like they they fed straight into the um the floor kind of older way of doing it or whatever um or maybe that was just for the heat and then the you know the ac that maybe they didn't even have ac i don't know it's it's just been the frankenstein house has been added to so many times that we're really not sure um what was going on i really want to take that off too but that's probably going to be for part four part four i don't really know what i'm going to do just yet i'm thinking uh I, you know, I usually do the sneak peek thing, but it, oh, look at this right here. All that rot. That's going to have to be fixed. It, that, that was just open, you know what I mean? There was just water going in there for who knows how many years. That's a big problem, but yeah, not really too sure what we're going to do for part four, but it's probably going to be ripping this thing apart. The shed as well, you know, I'll show you that clip of <laughs> it leaking when it was raining. I went in there and checked on how it was when it was raining, and lo and behold, it was uh, just way too wet in there to be putting any tools or any expensive items. You can see here, we're leaking right here for sure. It's coming in on those two big time. Let's see where else. We got some holes here too, definitely. And I can go back and watch this footage and kind of find out. So I'm gonna get that big, I got a big stack of vinyl behind the shed. I'm gonna be putting that vinyl on top of the roof and just sort of making like some, you know, vinyl shingles or something like that. And uh, yeah, just securing it, you know, putting a big heavy board on top or something to keep it from blowing off. And that should, you know, suffice, right? So I think that's gonna conclude part three. Stick around for part four. 
There's going to be some fun, interesting things. Perhaps even building a tire swing. I don't know. We, we don't really have enough time for that. You know, we got more necessities to, um, to deal with. But anyway, thanks for watching. Now, I don't know how long this is going to take to heat up, but this fire is very, very hot. Alrighty, so that was supposed to be the end of the video, but I have to show you the surveying stuff as well. Now, it's super informational, but not that interesting. If you're not in the, in the business of surveying your property, or maybe you already had it surveyed, this was an interesting situation in which the original deed, or the deed before mine, was just so, so old, and all the existing surrounding deeds were so old that I kind of had to do a lot of the work myself. I did get a survey, and I had to survey pretty much everyone else's property around me as well in order to, you know, it was very expensive. Uh, had to do that and you know it was just a big problem but what I'm doing is going as far back as I can and side note you can see this creek here gonna be doing some really fun projects with that in future videos gonna be damming it up fully legal by the way don't need a permit so long as it's less than I think you know 20 million gallons and it's not a wetland area and neither of those things are gonna apply but uh, anyway back to it with the surveying getting as close as we can to those property markers gonna get the drone up in the air and from there I know that the back of my property is at the top of, or bottom of an abstract, rather. And so I know that if I can see visually up in the air the neighbor's, you know, crisp property lines, I should be able to follow that line and kind of get a better idea of where my property markers are going to be on the top of that abstract. And that's exactly what we did. So... See here, hopefully I uh, show it. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so you can see here... He's got that real crisp property line, and I knew exactly that that would be, you know, further to the right, or east rather, is where my property markers would be. So, just kind of getting a good idea of that. You can see how easy it is to get lost down there, you know, there, there's just not a lot of stuff other than trees, which is a, is a really good benefit, but just super difficult to do this without a drone, you know. You, you really do need one makes it a lot easier and so yeah I can see there I kind of I kind of crisped it up with north and I knew I was maybe 20 30 paces off from that line now I know that I can either go west or east I realized I probably went too far west I was looking over there realized it had to be east so started going east looking for those pink flags and I think I see them down there and sure enough there they are got distracted by that creek a little bit who wouldn't look how beautiful that thing is Woo! Anyway, found those, and then I knew just go east further, and then I'm going to find the other marker. Bob's your uncle, right? There it is. Now, if y'all want a dedicated video on this surveying stuff, I'd really love to get into it in more detail. There's all kinds of crazy things going on. You know, Texas State Plane coordinate systems, you know, different coordinate systems, degrees, feet, minutes, seconds, and how GPSs can, you know, it just gets all kinds of complicated, right? And you could pay for, like, line staking and things like that, but the problem is that's going to cost you eight exuberant sum of money, especially if it's this wooded. And uh, what we're going to be doing is just essentially getting a taut string between those two corners, cutting down anything that that string touches, tightening it up intermediately, and then eventually we're going to have a super crisp string line going through the woods that we can then run a really nice barbed wire fence on. Not like the one we did in the front. Anyway, that's officially the end of this video. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more about surveying.